long time. And these two clubs played earlier this year at the Curry Hicks Cage up in Massachusetts, a tough place for any visiting club to go to. But Rutgers hung in very tough, only losing by nine points. Played tough. Eric Riggins had a great basketball game. He had 26 points there. For UMass, it was Dave Brown, although we'll want to watch Lorenzo Sutton, who's one of their, he is their leading scorer. Uh, should make for a good basketball game. They also look to Carl Smith uh, from the backcourt, a good, fine, a fine shooter. Well, not only look to him for some offense, but he could be one of their keys. He's the point guard. He controls the ball. He can set the tempo. Okay, and we're just about ready for this game. They're announcing the starting lineup, so we'll go down to the floor and uh, check out what's happening here in the pregame ceremonies. The starting lineups just being announced for both Rutgers and Massachusetts. As we mentioned, Massachusetts 8 and 13, head coach Ron Gerlifson of the Minutemen, and Craig Littlepage, the head coach of the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers at 5 and 16. Right now, the Rutgers pep band will play our national anthem. the starting lineups for both ball clubs. First for the Minutemen of Massachusetts. And we will have to make an amendment to the starting lineup as well. But the, the starting lineup initially at the forwards, number 23, David Brown from Baltimore. Also up front, Dwayne Chase, he too, uh, from Baltimore. Now, Joe Fennell was supposed to start at center. He will not. Dick Floyd, watch fill us in on that a little bit. Well, they had a discipline problem, and uh, the coach suspended him indefinitely, so we don't know whether he'll be out for the rest of the season or not, but he certainly is not here tonight. All right, in the backcourt, and it is a good backcourt, number five is Carl Smith, and number 11, the leading scorer, Lorenzo Sutton, for the Minutemen, averaging 16.6 points per game, a junior from Albany, Georgia. For the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, they will start up front, double zero, Eric Riggins averaging 21 points per game, and Emery Ward as well. Lee Perry will be the center, and Rick Danica and Steve Brown will start in the backcourt for the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers in their home white uniforms, and Massachusetts in their road maroon, Sean Mosby is starting in place of Fennel. Quick shot, a three-pointer by Sutton to start the game. What a way to start. He must have heard us talking about him because he didn't waste any time. He ranks number six in overall score in Atlantic 10. Eric Riggins, of course, ranks number one. Sutton, top score 10 times this year for the Minutemen of Massachusetts. Lee Perry or Steve Brown. Rick Danica is outside. Inside Riggins, turn around, no good. Rebound, tapped around, tapped back by Ward and out of bounds. And it will be Massachusetts ball. Massachusetts does like to play some man-to-man -man defense. It'll be interesting to see that matchup right now. They have a David Brown matched up on Eric Riggins. I've watched Eric the last couple of games. He's really playing well. Tough to stop one-on-one, -on -one, particularly inside. This is Smith. And 42, Sean Mosby, as we mentioned, in the starting lineup. David Brown hands to Mosby. He'll take the jumper. It is short. Rebound Ward. Emery Ward doing a good job off the boards this year for Rutgers. Leads the team in rebounds. Riggins in the corner. Just underway, and Massachusetts leads three to nothing. Emery Ward goes in the lane. Nice move by Ward. A strong move to the bucket. 
made that move with a lot of authority. And Emory Ward, I think, has really been a key lately with Rutgers. Does a very good job, not noticed a lot, doing a great job in rebounding. Plenty of time, of course, on the 45-second shot clock. Mosby left open. Now dishes back to Sutton. Sutton travels. Sutton had that open three-point shot, elected not to take it, tried to get a better shot, and in doing so, traveled. All right, Ward will inbound side court. Rick Datica, number 10. Sophomore from Elmwood, Elmwood, Elmwood Park, New Jersey. Lumas, excuse me, Lou, Lou Mass leads the Atlantic 10 in three-point shots. They're shooting about 42% from out there. Riggins wide open off the nice pass from Datica. Rutgers leads four to three. And Smith gets some instructions from Ron Gerlofsen as he brings the ball up. Sutton, this is Dwayne Chase, Mosby. Brown, nice baseline move, but Ward with a strong rebound, hands to Steve Brown. Steve Brown brings it up for Rutgers, goes to the basket, does not score. Riggins gets the rebound and is hammered underneath. No, oh, they say jump ball. Riggins was looking for the foul there, Dick. And that's going to be key for UMass. They're going to have to keep Eric Riggins outside. He's much, much tougher inside. All right, Brown inbounds. Danica back to Ward. Four to three. The Scarlet Knights lead it early first half. Lee Perry. Danica. Open three point range and travel. The same thing that Sutton did earlier. Tried to move in for a better shot. Yeah, those travel calls are tough, but you really have to be quick to call them. Sometimes I think a player gives a good fake and it can fake the official out. Here's Mosby. Good defense by Rutgers here. Outside shot, you know, good by Brown. Rebound Ward. Good defensive effort by the Scarlet Knights that time down. Lee Perry puts it on the floor, brings it back. Riggins in the lane, strong move, draws the foul. Eric Riggins is fouled. They'll call it on Dwayne Chase, the sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland. And Riggins will go to the line, and Eric will shoot two. He has been shooting well from the line, too, 80% on the year. He's been on fire, Dick Lloyd, 20 or more points in his last seven games. He has been playing well. I think one of the reasons Craig Littlepage has put him inside, and he's using him more inside with his back to the basket, and he's very difficult to play. Riggins hits the first, and Rutgers leads by two, five to three. He'll get another. Second is on the way, and good. Three-point lead for the Scarlet Knights. They lead it 6-3. Massachusetts breaks the press. Sutton with a nice pass to Chase. He's hammered inside by Lee Perry. First foul on Perry, that's the first team foul on Rutgers. Dwayne Chase goes to the line. Massachusetts, not a great free throw shooting team, 66% on the year. In fact, neither one of these clubs uh, sets the world on fire from the line. Rutgers shooting only 67% as a team. They're shooting very poorly. Second good. Six to five, Rutgers by one. 16 and a half remaining first half. Riggins, turn around, good. Eric Riggins with the baseline jumper. Eric Riggins is so important to that Rutgers offense because you don't find Ward and Perry usually doing a lot of scoring. Dadka and Brown not hitting real well from the outside, so Eric Riggin must score for Rutgers. Lorenzo Sutton. 
8-7. Rutgers, and they have the ball. Rick Datica moving against Lorenzo Sutton. Here's Brown open in the corner. Perry's jumper is way short. And Massachusetts on the break, they push it up. And now Brown will slow it down. Smith called for the travel. Third traveling violation we've seen early on. Ron Gerlifson, head coach of Massachusetts. Minuteman 8 and 13, 4 and 9 in the conference. They do get the turnover here, and the Minutemen push it up. Chase jumps, doesn't go. Rebound, Perry tracks it down. Lee Perry, the freshman from Freehold, getting a lot of playing time. Datica into Riggins. He scores, and he's fouled. Nice pass by Rick Datica. Found Riggins down inside in that spot, and he is tough. He goes up very strong, and being as good a foul shooter as he is, you're in trouble when you put him on that foul line. Dwayne Chase will sit down for Massachusetts. And Fitzhugh Terry, number 24, into the game for Massachusetts. Riggins gets the roll. Fitzhugh Terry, definitely a candidate for the Atlantic 10 all-name team. <laughs> Rutgers by four, 11 to seven. Here are the Minutemen. Smith moves against Steve Brown. This is Dave Brown. Mosby in and out, rebound Ward. Finally gets control of it. Stay to that nicely with the fingertips. 14 and a half remaining, first court, first half, Riggins. Off the side of the rim, Perry with a rebound, but the rejection by Mosby, and a nice defensive play. Four on one, Smith tried to cut the pie a little bit and lay it off to Mosby, but it was ineffective as Rutgers got back Steve Brown, knocking it out of bounds. David Brown will inbound, and here is Smith. David Brown's shot doesn't go, and Rutgers quickly up court. Steve Brown bounce pass Riggins, lays it up and in. Nice move by Eric Riggins. Timeout, Massachusetts, and the crowd at the Athletic Center on its feet. Timeout, 13 minutes, 57 seconds remaining in the first half. The score is Rutgers 13, Massachusetts 7. Nets and Devils fans, all the action under one roof is now on one channel as Sports Channel brings you exclusive action from the Meadowlands. The Red Hot New Jersey Devils are off to a great season. Coach Doug Carpenter has his troops playing gritty hockey, led by the sensational Kirk Muller. The Nets are rebounding strong. Look out for Buck Williams as he leads the Nets charge against the best the NBA has to offer. So don't miss out on exclusive action from the Meadowlands. Catch the Nets and Devils only on Sports Channel. Back at the Athletic Center where Rutgers has taken a six-point lead over Massachusetts. And Dick, especially that last time down court, Rutgers looking very sharp running the break. Well, I think Craig would want to push that ball, get it inside if he can to Eric Riggins. Be a good win for Rutgers to get. They're struggling a little bit. They've got the tournament coming up. I'm sure Craig is trying to give the kids a little bit of confidence, and a win can certainly do that. All right, Massachusetts will inbound side court. Carl Smith is... Number five, he has the basketball. <laughs> 24 is Terry who loses it and Smith regains. Lorenzo Sutton wide open, Sutton deadly when he's open like that. He comes up almost with the steal and then the foul is on Sutton, reaching in on Datica. Datica and Sutton having some words. <laughs> 
Take a look at that shot by Sutton outside. What's nice, he doesn't waste any time getting off. Nice quick release. Here's Ward. Perry, nice move in the lane, but the rejection by Terry, excuse me, by Mosby. But the foul. Sean Mosby, sophomore from Camden, New Jersey. Interesting the way Lee Perry is uh, asserting himself in the offense. I haven't seen that him do that as much, but a couple of times he's gotten the ball now, he's trying to take it to the hoop. Perry goes to the line and he will shoot two. And his first, is, yes it is good. <laughs> as he gets a most kind bounce. Second on the way, and good. So he hits both, 15-9, Rutgers by six. Sutton open, three-pointer, good. He's starting out awfully hot. Massachusetts, as we mentioned, a good three-point shooting team, 43% from three-point range on the season, that's good. Steve Brown, 15-12 your score as Ward moves strong to the bucket and draws the foul. A little difference in the offense between the two clubs. Rutgers working those screens along the baseline, trying to dump it down inside. Massachusetts really working outside, bringing the big men out. Don't have a lot of screens along the baseline. They're going to count on hitting from the outside, which can work against you if you cool down. Every Ward will shoot two. Emory, a sophomore from Jersey City. A lot of the younger players for Rutgers, of course, getting playing time this year because of the injuries which the Knights have suffered. In case you're not a regular follower of Rutgers basketball, you may not know that uh, two starters, Anthony Duckett, Ed Zucker out for the season. They've been hit hard. Second is no good. And it's a four point Rutgers lead. Scarlet Knights lead at 16-12. Smith calls the signals. He's the floor leader for Massachusetts. Here's David Brown back to Sutton now on the flank. Wilbert Hicks, 33, into the game for Massachusetts. Smith with a burst to the bucket. Nice move by Carl Smith. Very nice play. He took, out, took off from outside that three-point line, made a straight D-line for the basket. 16-14. It's only a two-point Rutgers lead. And a whistle on the play. Let's take a look at Smith's drive to the basket one more time, Dick. Does a nice job. We see he's right outside that three-point line when he goes up, lifts the ball up in the air, ducks it underneath, lays it out very nicely. All right, Massachusetts on the Rutgers turnover, and the Minutemen will bring it up. Terry, nice pass underneath to Hicks. Fitzhugh Terry with a nice, nice pass. And we're tied at 16. Here's Datica, three-pointer. No good. Rebound underneath Minuteman. Massachusetts pushes it up quickly. Smith to the top of the circle, now makes the move in the lane and scores. Almost like he was watching that replay and said, I'm going to do that one again. Looks so nice. And Massachusetts has taken the lead. The Minutemen lead at 18-16. Ward looks to get it in, and Smith knocks it out. Again, Ward struggling. And he can't get it in. He's got to call a timeout. 
So Rutgers unable to get the ball in, takes a timeout. 11 minutes, eight seconds remaining. Score, Massachusetts 18, Rutgers 16. Congratulations and good luck. Amboy Madison Home Equity Ready Credit could be the last loan you ever have to ask for. It's ready cash you can borrow instantly for any purpose at any time. You simply write a check for whatever you need and you can get approval within five days. So stop by or call any convenient Amboy Madison National Bank. Take advantage of the equity built into your home with Home Equity Ready Credit. Welcome back to Rutgers, where Rutgers trails Massachusetts by the score of 18-16. Scarlet Knights were up early, but UMass has put on a little bit of a spurt, and they've been able to get good play from Carl Smith, who has dri driven to the basket a number of times now, Dick. Made two nice moves. One from the right side of the floor came back almost immediately to the left side of the floor, made an identical move. I'm sure Craig Littlepage make a little bit of adjustment if he's going to stay with the man-to-man. -man. He's going to have to have that player on the offside coming off to pick up and help a little bit there. And before the break, Rutgers unable to get the ball in bounds. Emory Ward had to use the timeout. All right, Ward looks to get it in and barely does. Brown to Riggins. Riggins will slow up. Here is Brown, Steve Brown. Cross court, Datica. Riggins outside, calls for help, and Datica comes over. Perry's open and travels. Nope. He did travel. Nope. Foul. Fouls on Massachusetts. Fits you, Terry. Steve Watson into the game for Rutgers, and Lee Perry will leave. Brown gets it in, Danica. Riggins outside. Here's Brown from the top of the key, does a goal, rebound Massachusetts. Minutemen the other way quickly now. Smith at the top of the key, pulls it back to Sutton. He'll set it up. Massachusetts leads by two. Smith for three. Yes. And Massachusetts by five, 21-16. Here is Watson, Datica. Steve Brown will set up. Riggins at the foul line. Ward, the turnaround is short. And the Minutemen again on the run. Smith drives to the hoop, gets it back, and the foul is on Rutgers. It'll be Emery Ward called for the pass personal. Carl Smith playing so hard, he's asking to be taken out for a little bit of a breather. Smith at the line. He'll shoot two. Carl Smith holds the Massachusetts record for minutes played. It's been a workhorse for this ball club. It's not unusual for a player in that position. Point guard going to handle the ball, got to lead the pl uh, press play, tough defense to get a break every once in a while, keep him fresh. And Smith will come out as Chris Bailey into the game for Massachusetts. UMass has its largest lead now. They lead by seven, 23-16. Steve Brown. Watson. Riggins underneath scores. Nice pass by Steve Watson. And, and watching him during that set, he's so tough to play because he doesn't stop and he's got great quickness. Keeps just going in circles in there. Here's Bailey, 
fires inside Fitzhugh. Terry has it knocked away. Brown has it up court to Datica. Rick Datica pulls up. Here's Brown. Watson, Datica. Emery Ward from the foul line doesn't go. Rebound, Massachusetts. Miniman like to push the ball up. Sutton for three. Yes. He is on fire from three-point range. Here is Watson all alone. Lays it up. Doesn't go. Rebound, Massachusetts. Miniman the other way. Bailey hits David Brown. Doesn't go. But the rebound saved by Massachusetts. Good hustle. Hicks saved it to Brown, and he scores. Rutgers fans are getting a little restless as Massachusetts leads by 10, 28-18. Here's Datica into Riggins. Offensive foul against Eric Riggins. Let's take a look at that last basket by David Brown. That's a nice play here as he gets it on the save. Watch it. He goes into the center, fakes that baseline, goes to center. Almost a little bit of a half of a hook, if you will. Nice move off the backboard. I think we ought to ask him whether he's aiming for the backboard, but it went in, so it counts. All right, there's a timeout on the floor. Seven minutes, 54 seconds remaining, first half, and Massachusetts in command. They lead it, 28-18. Sports Channel is proud to announce that the youngest member of the NHL is the newest member of the Sports Channel team. The exciting New Jersey Devils are now part of the Sports Channel lineup. Joining the Islanders and Nets in dynamic New York area action, you'll be able to see exclusive games of the Young Devils, led by all-star center Kirk Muller and the sensational Greg Adams. Plus, you'll cheer Sports Channel's in-depth coverage of this up-and-coming franchise. A matchup that can't miss, the Devils and Sports Channel, number one in New York sports. And yes, this is the Atlantic 10 Conference, and Massachusetts leads records in this Atlantic 10 Conference game, 28-18. And Rutgers not looking good over the last several minutes. Having a little bit of trouble. Part of their problem, obviously, is their outside shooting. They're shooting about 42% from the field. Their opponent's shooting almost 50%. That would take some of the pressure off of Eric Riggins if they could get some outside firepower. All right, Massachusetts has an opportunity to go up by 12 or possibly 13, the way Sutton's been hitting those three points. Outside shot by Terry, Fitzhugh Terry. And the Minutemen by 12, 30 to 18. Here's Riggins. Datica at the foul line. Does not get the roll. Rebound to Mass. Quickly they come off court. And now they'll pull it back. Carrie Herrer, number 14, into the game for Massachusetts. David Brown. Oh, a spinner that doesn't go. And Perry pulls down the rebound. Here's Steve Brown, moves it up for Rutgers. Knights trail by 12. 6.40 remaining first half. Datica. Watson is open momentarily, but declines the shot. Inside, knocked away by UMass. Quickly, the Minutemen come up. Here is David Brown, who rams into Steve Watson, and he draws the offensive foul. Tough call there, but I would say this. David Brown has gotten some key rebounds for UMass down the other end. He really skies. That was a replay of the foul. Here we get a good look at it. I guess he was turned. As long as he was turned, squared to that defensive player and stopped, it was a charge. Here is Watson. Danica and Brown will set up. It's been a long time since Rutgers has scored a basket. Three, four, three, four. 
Brown, the jumper, good. Steve Brown. And Steve Brown shuts me up. 30-20. UMass by 10. Here's Lorenzo Sutton. Carrie Herrer. Sutton goes baseline, pops over Perry, doesn't go. And Riggins pulls down the carom. Danica across the midcourt line. Rick Danica behind the back dribble. Nice pass to Perry, but the foul underneath on Massachusetts. And Wilbert Hicks. And that created, really, by the nice pass by Datica. Datica did a nice job. He penetrated through the defense to him, found the open man. And Lee Perry will go to the line. He'll shoot two. Crowd down a little bit tonight here at the Athletic Center, but it is a snowy night in Piscataway, New Brunswick area. Here's Perry again. He'll shoot the second. It's good. So he hits one of two, and the Minutemen have a nine-point lead, 30 to 21. Sutton from the foul line. Lorenzo Sutton has been a dominating player with his shooting touch here in this first half. The interesting thing with the combination UMass has in, he kind of moves up to a forward, so against the press, that puts him down, puts him in good position. Datica for three is no good, and the Minutemen come back. Datica intercepts. Nice play by Ricky as he gets it to Perry. Emery Ward, baseline, back to Datica, goes in the lane, nice pass to Perry, who scores. Fine pass by Rick Datica. And I have been impressed with Datica's play here in the first half. Thirty-two, twenty-three. your score. Massachusetts, Sutton short. A foul may be over the back against Emery Ward. Let's take a look at that basket by Perry and the pass by Datica. Very smart, but holding it up, look at him drive the lane and just hand it off very nicely. One dribble and up by Perry. Nice strong move, great pass. There's Craig Littlepage, the head coach of Rutgers. On the foul, Eric Riggins will go to the line with Massachusetts over the foul limit. Riggins will shoot one and one. It's a good look at Eric. And he hits the first. Double zero from Patterson, New Jersey. Senior forward has had a fine career here at Rutgers. And hits the second. Watson into the game. Riggins will come out. And he gets a nice hand from the crowd. 32-25, the Minutemen of UMass leading. 420 remaining, first half. Sutton for three. Off the front of the rim, then Ward going for the rebound, has it knocked out from behind, and it will be Rutgers ball, last touch by Massachusetts. Dwayne Chase knocked it out. Inbound to Brown, Steve Brown across the midcourt line. Datica open, fires, short. Rebound, Watson, good, off the backboard. 32-27, 3.40 remaining. Dwayne Chase loses, Sutton retrieves.
Good defense here by Rutgers. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Smith from the foul line does not get the roll, but the rebound underneath by David Brown, and that doesn't go. And Steve Brown pulls it down for Rutgers. Three minutes remaining, first half. The Knights trail by five. They can cut it to three here. Last touch by Massachusetts. Craig Littlepage coming back with Eric Riggins. I wondered how long he'd leave him out. It really limits Rutgers' offense without him in there. Ward underneath off the nice inbound, cannot connect, but Perry tracks down the rebound, puts it up and draws the foul. So Lee Perry will go to the line, he'll shoot two. Massachusetts has not been playing that badly. They've split their last six games. They were three and three over their last six coming off the loss to Rhode Island, but included in those three wins, victories over St. Joseph's and George Washington. So. They've been playing pretty good basketball over the last uh, six games. And of course, they got that victory against Rutgers up there. But watching right. the offense, they're relying an awful lot on their outside shooting. Very few screens inside. They'll post up a guy down low, but not off the screen. And that can get you in trouble. If you go cold, what do you go to? Perry can cut the UMass lead to three with this free throw. And he hits. So Lee Perry looking sharp from the free throw line. Cuts it to 32-29. Here's Carl Smith, he'll set it up. Sutton, Dwayne Chase. Fitzhugh Terry called for the travel. And Rutgers can now cut it to one as Datica comes back in and Lee Perry will sit down. So they'll go with Ward, Brown, Datica, Watson, and Riggins. Steve Brown with the basketball, looks to set up. Here's Datica, finally gets it to Datica. Watson into Riggins, turn around, is good. Nice move by Eric Riggins. And it's a one point game, 32-31. Massachusetts had a 12-point lead, but Rutgers has come storming back. Under two minutes remaining, first half. And uh, Tarry throws that one away. Quickly, Brown up to Danica, and they'll slow it up. Rutgers can take the lead here with a bucket. Riggins in the lane, puts up a floater that goes in. Rutgers played it smart that time too because they went down inside again to Riggins. When they do that, almost assured of a basket. If not, you put them on the foul line and that almost assures you two points. The Scarlet Knights by one, 33-32. One minute, 20 seconds remaining. Brown dives on the floor for the ball. Coming down on top of them, the Massachusetts player Dwayne Chase and Brown is down on the floor and he looks to be okay. That's good to see. Steve Brown okay. All right, let's take a look at that Eric Riggins basket. Nice move by Riggins. He fights really hard to post up in there, and then he just lets it up, goes over that defense by just walking a little bit higher. All right, the minute man look to regain the lead. Hicks with a nice move inside. Sutton with the rebound doesn't go. Chase, and they wave it off, and the foul is on Watson underneath. So Watson commits the foul with 105 remaining here in this first half. Rutgers is not over the limit, so Massachusetts will throw in underneath their own bucket. And Fitzhugh Terry will pull the trigger. Terry finds Smith at the top of the key. A full 45 on the shot clock and one minute remaining in the half. But they shoot right away, and Terry hits the jumper. And Massachusetts has regained the lead. The Minutemen lead at 34-33. Here's Datica, who brings it across the midcourt line. There's about a five-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. 
UMass trying to front Riggins inside if they can. Datica throws it away, Sutton with the interception. And now the shot clock turned off as there are 30 seconds remaining in the half and Massachusetts may play for the last shot. They run their delay game out of a little stack. And the clock is down to 10. Here's Smith moving against Steve Brown. Five seconds. Smith pops, does not go. Rebound to Watson. He may not get it off. Then that'll do it. So an entertaining first half of basketball. Your score at halftime is Massachusetts 34, Rutgers 33. We will return with a look at the first half, some statistics, and second half action in just a moment. Let's bring on a really big shoe. Don't be confused by this commercial. The point we'd like to make is, for the biggest selection of high-quality athletic shoes, there's only one place, Effinger's Sporting Goods in Bound Brook. With over 30,000 pairs of athletic shoes, you can count on finding your size and style, all the brands worn by the best athletes in America. So the next time you need a pair, come to Effinger's Sporting Goods Shoe Department. Any other store looks like kid stuff. <laughs> Welcome back to the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. Lou Brogno joined by Dick Lloyd. At halftime, our score is Massachusetts 34 and Rutgers 33. A very evenly played first half score-wise and evenly played in the statistic categories as well, Dick. As we take a look at the stats, uh, you will see that uh, things are, are pretty much even up. Although Rutgers not shooting very well from the field. That's right. hurting them, although if they can be in the ball game only down one point shooting that poorly, we were saying early on that Rutgers is getting mostly down inside and yet they're shooting worse than Massachusetts. They need some support from their guard. Rebounding even up, turnovers even up, not a factor at all, and of course the foul line has not been a factor yet. Both teams in the limited time they've spent on the foul, foul line, they have shot well. But again, it's that, uh, that poor shooting percentage by Rutgers, and that is something that has plagued the Scarlet Knights all year long, isn't it? Well, they just don't have the, shoot the outside shooters where they need it, and they've tried a lot of different things. Ricky Datica, who I think is a very good shooter, just having a little trouble hitting from the outside, uh, and that hurts because it puts more pressure on Eric Riggins and everybody else inside. Eric, though, playing especially well, I think, over the last six or seven basketball games. Massachusetts comes in at 8-13, 4-9 in the Atlantic 10. It's an important game for them as well as they try to jostle for position for the postseason Atlantic 10 tournament. And Rutgers, of course, uh, the 5-16 and 16 mark, only 2-10 and 10 in the conference. And they, too, uh, would like to get some uh, winning started here as they uh, head towards the end of the season. But being in a conference like that, in a conference that has a playoff, uh, really gives you something to shoot for because when you finish that last regular season game, you can say that's it, we're into our second season, anything can happen in the playoffs. Of course, the conference has uh, gotten some notoriety this, year, notoriety this year from Temple as the Owls are having an excellent season and I believe last time I looked they were ranked sixth in the nation uh, playing excellent basketball. And it's good for the conference uh, from the conference's standpoint to have a club like that nationally ranked and uh, that is recognizable around the nation. All right, Rutgers trailing by a point. If you're just joining us in the first half, uh, it was kind of topsy-turvy. Massachusetts, actually Rutgers got off to the good start. They really did. Rutgers uh, playing well in the early moments. And then Massachusetts reeled off about six points in a row, went out to a 12-point lead and then Rutgers came storming back. Massachusetts just got very hard, hot. Lorenzo Sutton hitting from the outside. We had Carl Smith taking those two drives to the basket there. Got their lead for him, but they weren't able to hold on to it. Massachusetts will inbound to begin the second half. And David Brown will pull the trigger for the Minutemen. 
and he gets it into Smith, and we're underway here in the second half with UMass leading by one, and they have the ball. Fitzhugh Terry, number 24. Sutton is open, but that one is off. Rebound knocked out by Emery Ward. No, are they saying last touch Massachusetts? Ron Gerlison says, how can you say that? They're going to give it to Rutgers. Gerlison is furious. And uh, from our angle, I'd have to agree with uh, Massachusetts. I thought it was last touch by Rutgers. I think you may be right. Perry inside, scores, and Rutgers leads 35-34. Of course, it doesn't matter what I think. Nor what the coach thinks. Right. Just underway second half. And Rutgers has regained the lead. Scarlet Knights by a point. And the Minutemen look to set up. Here's David Brown and Smith. Brown from the foul line, fires in and out, rebound knocked around, Sutton with the rebound, tries to bank it home, doesn't go, rebound, a scramble underneath the bucket, Ward has it ripped away, jump ball, and it will go to Rutgers. Now we have UMass trying that outside game again, now it's not dropping for them. Fortunately for them, they're giving a good effort on the board, which is keeping them in there. Some token pressure by Smith in the backcourt, but Rutgers breaks it easily. Here's Riggins, who pops and hits. Rutgers coming out early and countering right away. It's a three-point Rutgers lead, and Ron Gerlson calls timeout for Massachusetts. 18 minutes, 43 seconds remaining. Second half, the score, Rutgers 37 and Massachusetts 34. Nets and Devils fans, all the action under one roof is now on one channel as Sports Channel brings you exclusive action from the Meadowlands. The Red Hot New Jersey Devils are off to a great season. Coach Doug Carpenter has his troops playing gritty hockey, led by the sensational Kirk Muller. The Nets are rebounding strong. Look out for Buck Williams as he leads the Nets charge against the best the NBA has to offer. So don't miss out on exclusive action from the Meadowlands. Catch the Nets and Devils only on Sports Channel. Well, Dick, already here in the second half, we've had a little controversial moment with head coach uh, Ron Gerlison of Massachusetts, and Rutgers has come out and played much better here in the second half, very similar to the way they started the first half. Well, they're countering right away, and of course that's really tough for Mass to lose that call, which probably was their ball, and for Rutgers to take it down the other end and score. And at this point, though, I think Ron ought to forget about it, get into his game plan, try to get his team back in the game easy for me to say sitting up here. <laughs> All right, well, Massachusetts will uh, try to get back in the game here as they will inbound the basketball. They trail just by three, and the way Sutton shoots those three-pointers, uh, that's not many for this ball club. Sutton for three. In and out. Rebound war. Here is Steve Brown. Up ahead to Datica. Rick Datica for three. No good. Rebound. Riggins underneath. Loses. Sutton. Does a pirouette and recaptures the basketball. Here's Smith moving against Brown. Sutton for three. No, Emory Ward. Massachusetts maybe takes too many three-point shots, though. Riggins keeps it, saves it back to Brown. Nice hustle by Riggins. Here is Datica. Brown. <laughs> Some pushing and shoving underneath. Riggins got crunched by Fitzhugh Terry, and he garners the personal foul. Interesting to watch that game that's played inside as they each fight for position. The defense trying to front, the offense trying to come over the top. Into Perry from the lane. He gets the roll. Lee Perry scores. Rutgers by five, 39-34, and the Scarlet Knights have come out smoking here in this second half. Oh. 
Sutton. Nice move. Nice quickness, great body control as he went to the baseline and up very strong. Sutton only a junior out of Albany, Georgia. Dadica. Knocked away, a scramble for the ball. Smith saves, no, oh, a foul, nope. I'm not sure what that call was, folks, to be quite honest with you. I do know that Massachusetts has the basketball. I think he must have called out of bounds and Rutgers. Years ago, there used to be a force out. Can't call that anymore. It's either got to be a foul or out of bounds or no call. All right, here come the Minutemen, and they can cut it back down to one. Fitzhugh Terry, baseline jumper. The foul before the shot is on Steve Brown. Steve Brown in that zone defense tried to drop from the outside down to cut off that baseline, grab the piece of his arm as he did. And Fitzhugh Terry at the line. And a Buffalo, New York, hits the first. He'll get one more. And if he does hit it, Massachusetts will trail by just one. And he does. It's a one-point game. 39-38 Rutgers. Full court pressure by Massachusetts. And Brown finally spins across the midcourt line. Boy, Riggins really jostling for position inside. Datica with a short jumper, it goes. Three point, Rutgers lead, 41-38. Here's Smith at the foul line. Hicks tries to bank it, doesn't go. Rebound, tap through, it's like a volleyball match. No foul. And well, I don't know. I think the jump ball will be the call. Hunt Gerlison is beside himself on the bench. Can't believe that there wasn't a foul. Jump ball and UMass. UMass has the basketball on the alternating possession rule. And they trail by three with 15.40 remaining. Smith for three. Yes. And we have a tie ball game. Well, that three-pointer can get you back into the game in a hurry, can it? Here is Datica moving against Lorenzo Sutton. And he does get it across. In the corner to Perry. Tied at 41. Datica loses, and it will be Massachusetts ball as it goes out. Last touch by Rutgers, and the Minutemen quickly will bring it up. Pitch you, Terry, really working hard on Reagan's inside, does not want to play behind him. Smith with an acrobatic shot that does not go. Emery Ward with the rebound, and he brings it across. Perry's open, but declines the shot. Here is Ward, who moves to the hoop, scores, and is fouled. Basket counts, and he'll attempt the three-point play. Nice move by Emery Ward. Rutgers done so much more of that than Massachusetts. Even the Massachusetts big men, 6'8", coming outside, taking the jumper instead of trying to either get it inside or take it to the basket. That's the fourth foul on David Brown. He will have to sit down for Massachusetts. And Emery Ward at the line. He'll get one. He's got it. Rutgers by three. 44-41. Hicks outside, Ward with a strong rebound. 
Eric Riggins playing Hicks that time to just say, go ahead, I'll let you shoot it. Scouting report says you can't hit from the outside, and he proved right that time. Perry. And Emery Ward with authority underneath the boards. Brown for three. And Rutgers by six, 47-41. Sutton hits. It's a nice little play, and that's a patent part of their offense where Sutton goes through to that block, and then they screen down for him as he steps out. Forty-seven, forty-three, under 14 minutes remaining, second half. Ward hammered underneath. The foul will be on Hicks. Gilbert Hicks volunteered that one, put his hand up right away as soon as the whistle blew. He knew what he did. That's only his second. That's the third team foul on Massachusetts. Datica. Ward. Riggins from the foul line gets the roll. Forty-nine, forty-three. Smith for three. Yes. Forty-nine, forty-six. It's almost, Dick, that this team comes down and looks for the three-pointer first sometimes. No question about that. Certainly looking for the outside shot, and if they're going to take the outside shot, they're going to step behind that three-point line. Point. Rutgers lead. Good defense here by Massachusetts. Riggins out to Datica. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Datica for three. Yes. It's a three-point festival. As Rutgers leads by six, 52 to 46, 12 and a half remaining. Sutton for two this time. A rare two-point shot, <laughs> especially in the last few minutes. Here comes Danica quickly up court. Cross court, Brown. Steve inside. Perry got good position and scores. And draw, no. They say no basket. Offensive foul against Lee Perry. Actually, it might have been Emory Ward. No, it is Perry. Excuse me. Lee Perry on the foul. Craig Littlepage doesn't think so. And Massachusetts throws it away. Steve Brown. Cross court, Riggins fires, doesn't go. Rebound knocked underneath. Massachusetts, Dwayne Chase gives to Carl Smith. Cross court, almost intercepted by Danica, but Sutton scores. 52-48. Here's Datica. Cross court Brown. Baseline Ward. Loses, and the foul on Chase. Let's take a look at that offensive foul one more time by Perry and see. Uh, Are they doing this job of dumping the ball down inside? Goes up, dumps it down inside. Tough to say whether he's set. That's a judgment call, which basketball officiating is a lot of judgment. <laughs> Riggins hits. UMass taking some of that pressure off on defense now. They've gotten out of that man. They're falling back more into his own or a little bit of matchup, giving Rutgers a chance to hit some outside shots. 54-48. Lorenzo Sutton. Riggins the rebound. Here comes Steve Brown quickly up court. Danica to Ward lays it home. Pretty fast break. Very nice play, and Steve Brown starting that by pushing it up the floor to Ricky Datica. Great pass from Datica. 
An eight point Rutgers lead, 56 48. Here is Smith, and the crowd has got it going. Now Brown with the steal. He lays it up and in. And a timeout. A break of the action as Massachusetts calls timeout. Before we go to the break, though, Let's take a look at that basket by Emery Ward on the fast break. Steve Brown pushing up to Ricky Daddick, a perfect pass for Emery Ward to get that layup, bring the crowd back into the game. All right, timeout on the floor. 10 minutes, 24 seconds remaining. The crowd on its feet here at the Athletic Center. The score, Rutgers 58, Massachusetts 48. Congratulations and good luck. Amboy Madison Home Equity Ready Credit could be the last loan you ever have to ask for. It's ready cash you can borrow instantly for any purpose at any time. You simply write a check for whatever you need and you can get approval within five days. So stop by or call any convenient Amboy Madison National Bank. Take advantage of the equity built into your home with Home Equity Ready Credit. There's uh, some lonely spectators who are enjoying a fine basketball game so far by Rutgers. Knights lead it by 10. I talked about getting that crowd back into the ball game before <laughs> he didn't get those three back in the ball game. Well, they're, they're uh, too far away, Dick. They can't figure out what's going on. Interesting with that UMass offense, we talked about not going inside, mostly attacking from outside. There you had a situation where you have Wilbert Hicks at six foot eight doing a lot of the handling when he steps out at the point there. Had a little trouble controlling the ball, and Steve just stripped it from him. And uh, Ron Gerlison calling the timeout, looking to get to the momentum that Rutgers has gained. Stopped a little bit, and Massachusetts will inbound. And the Minutemen need a bucket here because uh, this one getting away from them just a little as the Knights lead by 10. Plus, a three-point shot, that's not a big lead. Bailey, number 12, into the game for UMass. Sutton, short. Datica rebound. Steve Brown. Eric Riggins tried to force it inside to Perry, but Ward with nice hustle regained. Datica and Steve Brown at the top. Perry, no good. Rebound, Massachusetts. Bailey brings it up for the Minutemen. Hicks passes inside, shot blown by Terry. Ball knocked around. Danica loses, and the foul on UMass. Lorenzo Sutton. He is out. Carl Smith comes in for the Minutemen. Tough series for Massachusetts. You can't get them any closer than that. They played really tough off the board, went up very strong, couldn't get it to drop. And then to pick up the foul to boot. Perry inside the ward, puts the ball on the floor and loses. And the whistle before the shot. Interesting the way Hicks kind of carries that ball towards the bucket. It almost looks like he's turning it over. Well, it almost looks like he doesn't know where he's gone, <laughs> which is part of his problem. And I was going to use the same word to describe it. Interesting. It's very strange. Very close to it. What well, could be called a turnover. Because he really puts his palm on the ball almost. He kind of carries it with him. He's at the line. As Rutgers has picked up their 13th foul this half. And he misses the first. He'll get another. Wilbert Hicks, Jr. from New Haven, Connecticut. His second is good. So he hits one of two. And it's a nine-point game. Steve Brown with the basketball for Rutgers breaks the Massachusetts pressure. Bounce pass to Watson, who shovels off to Riggins. Riggins muscles his way in, cannot hit the shot. Watson rebound and scores. 
Nice offensive rebound by Watson there. Also a great move by Riggins where he drove that baseline up very strong. 60 to 49. And again, that uh, move by Hicks. Sixty fifty one. Eight and a half remaining. Here's Brown. Watson hits. Smith. Offensive foul. Eric Riggins taking some punishment that time. That's only his first personal foul for the Massachusetts point guard. Ward gets it into Riggins. Brown quickly up court. the foul on Mass, I believe, on David Brown. If that's his, if the foul's on Brown, I believe he's fouled out. 17 foul, I guess not. I think it's on Fitzhugh Terry who's saying, he grabbed me. He's the one trying to front Riggins. It is on Terry, as you called it, Dick. It's only a matter of time. Those two are really jostling each other in there. Officials let that go for a while. Eventually it's called. Riggins at the line. Eric will shoot one and one. And first is good. 12 point. Rutgers lead. He'll get another. Second good. So the Knights by 13, 64, 51. Seven minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Fitzhugh Terry takes the open jumper, cannot connect, rebound, Rutgers. Ward shovels to Brown, quickly up to Riggins. He pops, doesn't go, rebound Brown, under to Riggins who lays it home. Again, I think Steve Watson caused some of that because he just got a hand on the ball to pop it loose off that rebound. It's a 15-point Rutgers lead. Hicks short. Rebound tapped around. Last touched by Rutgers. It will be Massachusetts ball. Mosby doesn't go, Watson with the rebound, and again, shooting from the outside. And this is what I was saying, Lou, where when it leaves you, there's not much left, and you know, everybody's getting a chance to throw it up from out there, so it's not just Sutton. Ward, Watson into Riggins, he's hammered, they, oh, is it a three-second violation? And it is. Three-second violation against Rutgers. UMass takes over. 640. And the Minutemen have got to get something going here to get back in this game. They have looked listless over the last three or four minutes. And time is a wasting. Here is David Brown inside. And the foul, I believe, will be before the shot. But that will only be Rutgers' fourth team foul. And it will not send. UMass to the lawn, or will it? Two shot foul? I thought that the foul was before the shot. All right, here's Chase at the line. Dwayne Chase hits the first. UMass will have to do more of that consistently, look to get it down inside. They got a better odds of the shot. They also have a chance of getting a foul call. Chase hits both, and it's a 13-point lead for Rutgers, 
53. Steve Brown dribbles out of traffic and finds Datica at the top of the key. Here's Ward on the left flank. Back to Datica in the Riggins with a superb pass. Very nice, too, from the wing to that point. Very tough for the defense to front then, and he dropped it down inside. Well executed. Again, a 15-point lead for Rutgers. 68-53. Under six minutes remaining. Sutton for three. Riggins the rebound. Rutgers owns the boards here in the second half. Well, running an offense like they are with the floor spread like they are and the big guys coming out, they got a long way to go in and rebound. Ward to Datica. And a foul on Massachusetts underneath. The crowd called that one. <laughs> That's going to be almost automatic every time because Massachusetts knows they can't let it get inside the Riggins. He does a nice job of using his body. And uh, Mosby says, uh, I didn't foul, coach. The crowd getting on Mosby. Third foul on him. And Riggins goes to the line. Eric will shoot one and one. Front end is good. He'll get another. And Rutgers has its largest lead by 16, 69, 53. Second on the way, good. 70, 53, the Knights by 17. Here is Carl Smith. Five and a half remaining. Sutton for three. No good. Ooh, a tech, that's got to be a technical foul. As Chase fires the ball at the referee. Got called for the pushing foul, legitimate call. You know, late in the game, pressing a little bit, frustration sets in. And he will sit. <laughs> and Riggins will shoot the tees. hits the personal foul and now he'll shoot the technical foul and he cannot hit the tee oh that actually was the second the other end of the personal here's the tee and he hits 72-53, Rutgers by 19. Let's uh, take a look at that last foul, see what happened exactly. No question, he put his hands right on, right on his back and went up. And there at the tail end, you saw the uh, why the technical was called. Datica. Inside, oh, Ricky Datica, even though Riggins missed that shot, Datica has been sensational tonight with his passing. Here's Smith for three. Whistle underneath. And I believe it's against Steve Brown. Seventy-two fifty-three is your score, 445 remaining. But uh, Dick, uh, not to beat a dead horse, but Datica really doing a wonderful job passing the basketball. Playing very well, using that sixth sense, really. It's not just the standard pass or the easy pass or a guy coming around the screen, but really has a knack to find that open guy and deliver the ball. All right, break in the action. Four minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Second half, the score is Rutgers 72 and Massachusetts 53. Sports Channel is proud to announce that the youngest member of the NHL is the newest member of the Sports Channel team. 
The exciting New Jersey Devils are now part of the Sports Channel lineup. Joining the Islanders and Nets in dynamic New York area action. You'll be able to see exclusive games of the Young Devils, led by All-Star center Kirk Muller and the sensational Greg Adams. Plus, you'll cheer Sports Channel's in-depth coverage of this up-and-coming franchise. A matchup that can't miss the Devils and Sports Channel, number one in New York sports. Look at the Rutgers cheerleaders entertaining the crowd here at the Athletic Center. The crowd which is uh, pretty happy at this point as their club is ahead by 19 points. And we mentioned Rutgers coming in with a 5 and 16 record. And to be quite honest, Rutgers hasn't had too many ball games like this. And yet they're playing very well. And that's to hold together with all the pressure they're under and to keep playing their game says something for the kids out there. All right, Carl Smith will be at the line. The foul was on Steve Brown of RU. And Smith will shoot two. Does not get the first. And they're just struggling right now. Second is on the way. It is good. 72-54, 18-point, Rutgers lead. Here's Brown across the midcourt line and throws it away. Watson, with Watson's size, he was able to track down that ball. Riggins hammered from behind. It's a nice thing when you have a guy that can play inside like that, that can shoot so well from the foul line because you know he's going to get hit. And step to that line, it's as good as the layup. Foul on Fitzhugh Terry. And Eric Riggins to the line. One and one for Riggins. He's got the first. Second is on the way, and good. 74-54, Rutgers by 20 in their largest lead. With four and a half remaining, Smith drives in the lane to the hoop, puts it up, doesn't go. Rebound underneath, doesn't go. Knocked away, Datica comes out of the pack. Still trying to regain the ball. Now he still has the ball, and he throws it out of bounds. Last touched, I think, by Rutgers. A most <laughs> interesting series there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Ricky stayed right with it. Three times, Datica tried to get the ball to Riggins. <laughs> nice hustle, though. Foul was on Datica, and that's only his first foul with four minutes left in the game. Only the 16th foul for Rutgers. UMass, three-pointer, Terry's good. Fitzhugh Terry. 74-57, under four minutes now. Brown trying to spin away from Bailey. Gets it to Datica. Inside Riggins, oh, nice move, but it didn't go. Bailey takes it out of bounds. Nice move again by Steve Watson, who hung on that board, got a piece of it. All right, Ward throws into Brown. Into Riggins, knocked out by Terry. He'll come out, and Mosby will come in. Riggins into Ward. Emery Ward puts up the baseline jumper short. Riggins with the rebound, the foul on Riggins. <laughs> Riggins didn't like the call. Well, he did use that left hand just a little too much to push himself up a little bit higher on the Massachusetts player's shoulder. And Wilbert Hicks at the line. He'll shoot one and one. Three minutes, 29 seconds remaining. Rutgers is on their way to their sixth victory of the season. 
unless something amazing happens over the next three and a half minutes. That's short. Hicks stepped on the end line. Oh, offensive foul is the call on Hicks. All right. Went into Steve Watson. Here's Datica. And the Knights look to, I was going to say, look to run a little clock until Riggins went towards the bucket. Ward is fouled. What they're looking to do is spread the floor a little bit. And when you do spread the floor and UMass trying to double team, it opens up a little bit and makes it pretty easy to get it inside to Eric. So every Ward to the line. Fouls on Mosby. That's his fourth. Ward will shoot two. And he cannot hit the first. He'll get another. Second. No good. He misses both. 74-57. Three minutes remaining in Massachusetts with the basketball. David Brown fires, doesn't go. Brown, Steve Brown with the rebound. The foul is on Bailey. That'll put Steve Brown to the line. He'll shoot one and one. I mentioned Massachusetts had been playing well. Then they come off the loss to Rhode Island this weekend. Interesting at this point in the game, Dick, with Massachusetts. Got to wonder where their good outside shooters are. Carl Smith, Lorenzo Sutton, not in the game. Those are the guys who can readily throw up those three-point shots and get, get you somewhat back in the game. Yeah, hard to figure what they're doing there. Steve Brown hit the first. He'll get another as Rutgers is on its way to an impressive win here at home. And maybe this is something that will get the Knights on the winning track. Playing very well tonight, 76-57. David Brown throws one up, draws the foul. And he'll shoot two. Watson's second foul. And he hits the first. 76, 58, he'll get another. 76, 59. Ward looks to get it in. He can't, or can he? Foul on Massachusetts? I believe that's the call. Bailey with the foul. This will send Steve Brown <laughs> to the line, one and one. So no time moves off the clock and the foul called on Massachusetts. UMass putting that full court pressure on Rutgers, breaking it by sending Steve Brown. Make that little cut right in front of the player, taking it inbounds. He got blocked that time. Crowd very quiet right now. Let's face it, folks, there's not a whole lot going on right now. Steve Brown at the line. And hits the first. As it rolls around the rim and in. He'll get another. Steve Sr. from Trenton. He'll get one more here. 77 59. Second good. 78-59, Rutgers by 18 again. By 19. 
Riggins, tough rebound. Loses the ball out of bounds. It'll be Massachusetts ball. Riggins says, where's the foul? A little bit of pressure. Did have a player on his back. Outside, Brown. No good, rebound, Watson. Here's Steve Brown. Brings it across. Cross court, Datica. 2.20 remaining, Emery Ward. Steve Brown back out to Watson. 19 point lead for the Scarlet Knights on their way to their sixth win of the year. Massachusetts will be dropping to eight and 14. Ward into Riggins, knocked away by UMass. Hicks inside. David Brown in trouble. A reach in on Ward. Never reward doesn't want to do that with one minute and 49 seconds left. Now, if you can see Craig Littlepage's face, he didn't want Emory Ward to do that either. <laughs> it's only Emory's second foul. David Brown at the line, cannot hit the first, and Ward comes up with the rebound. 145 remaining. Steve Brown moves it against Bailey. Datica. Riggins open, dunks it. Technical foul on Eric Riggins for hanging on to the rim. But he'll come out. And the crowd gives Riggins an ovation. Played well. He's playing as well as I've seen him play in his tenure here at Rutgers. And he seems to be getting stronger. Our technical foul will be shot by Carrie Herrer. And he misses. Let's take a look at that slam one more time. That's a great slam. You know he's done. He has a guy on his back. Goes up too. Now watch him. See him hang just a little bit too long. One of the Massachusetts players seems to be shaken up. And I'm not quite sure what the problem is. It's Wilbert Hicks. And they're going to take him back to the locker room. He seems to be in a little bit of duress. UMass with the basketball, but they trail by a whole lot. Down by 21 with a minute and 13 left. And Chase tries the uh, slam on the alley-oop, doesn't go. Bailey banks it home. 80-61. One minute remaining. Here's Danica. Cross-court Watson. Datica being hounded. Steve Brown. The foul outside on Bailey against Datica, and that'll send Rick Datica to the line. It's the third foul on Bailey. 45 seconds remaining. As we mentioned, last time these two teams played back on the 15th of January, UMass won at 76-67. Dick Lloyd made an excellent point in the pregame show. He mentioned that the Minutemen have never won here. And guess what? They still haven't. Well, they've won at Rutgers once, not here. Right, not in the Athletic Center. Not here. And that's a long time ago, 64-65. So it's been a long time, and the drought continues. Mosby with the bucket, 82-63, 30 seconds remaining. Danica. Watson shovels to Peterson. Mark Peterson blocked. And Mass with the basketball, the foul will be, I believe, on Peterson. 
And it is. That stops the clock with 16 seconds remaining. And Bailey will shoot one and one as the crowd begins to file out here at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center where they've seen Rutgers win their sixth game of the year. Second good, 82-65. Perry looks to get it in, hands to Brown. Brown with the basketball, shovels up to Datica. 10 seconds remaining. Datica, bounce pass, knocked away by Mass. Massachusetts the other way. Up ahead they come. The, re the layup is good by Herrer. Two seconds, one, and that'll do it. Rutgers with a big win at home as they defeat Atlantic 10 rival Massachusetts. Final score, 82-67. And Dick Lloyd, an impressive win for Rutgers, played very good second half. I think so, and I think everybody made a great contribution. Eric Riggins, of course, playing stronger each game. I thought the backcourt, Ricky Datica, he had some of those great passes. Steve Brown was not that flashy, but I'll tell you what, he kept Rutgers in that up-tempo. He really got the ball up quickly, had no uh, trouble against that pressure. And, of course, Warden Perry did a nice job on hitting the boards. I think a very good performance by Rutgers. All right, UMass dropped to 8 and 14, 4 and 10 in the conference. Rutgers improves to 6 and 16. They are now 3 and 10 in the conference. All right, thanks very much for joining us for the rest of the uh, Channel 6 Sports Group. And Dick Lloyd, I am Lou Brogno, thanking you for joining us for Rutgers Basketball. And Rutgers Basketball is brought to you by Effinger Sporting Goods, located on Route 28 in Bound Brook. It's New Jersey's largest sporting goods complex. Once again, our final score from the Lewis Brown Athletic Center is Rutgers 82 and Massachusetts 67.